video, we're going to be talking about how we can simplify quotients with square roots um, so that we can talk about some properties of special right triangles. In using properties of special right triangles, sometimes we have to divide by a square root. So let's talk about that skill first. There is what's called the quotient property of radicals, where if you have a fraction under a square root, you are allowed to give the numerator and denominator each their own square root. Sometimes that helps simplify things. For example, in this first one here, the square root of 1 fourth is maybe not possible to do in our head as is, but if we break it apart and give the top its own square root and the bottom its own square root, we can simplify the square root of 1 as 1 and the square root of 4 is 2. It is possible if we have a square root being divided by a square root that we can go backwards here and just put that fraction under one square root, like this example. Here the square root of 8 is an irrational number and the square root of 2 is an irrational number by themselves. But if we take 8 over 2 and put it under one square root, we can simplify that ratio or fraction there. 8 divided by 2 is 4 and the square root of 4 is 2. So going back and forth between these two forms can help you simplify quotients of radicals. These two examples are rational quotients, meaning that the answer that we get is a nice rational number. Let's see what happens if we're dealing with an irrational number though. For example, 5 divided by the square root of 3 is going to be an irrational number. So how can we simplify it and get rid of this radical in the denominator? Lots of things aren't allowed in the denominator. Uh, negative symbols are often put in the front or on top rather than being in the denominator. Uh, radical values aren't allowed in the denominator. And as you advance in math, other things like imaginary numbers are also not allowed to stay in the denominator if we want to simplify. So the way that we can get rid of the radical in the denominator, if it's a square root, is by squaring it or multiplying it by itself. However, in fraction math, we're not just allowed to do something to either the top or the bottom. We have to do it to both top and bottom in order to stay balanced. Multiplying by this value here is really multiplying by 1. So we're not changing the value. But in doing so, we're able to move that square root from the bottom to the top. So on the bottom, we have the square root of 3 squared. Squaring a square root is going to undo that radical, and we're going to be left with 3 in the denominator. But on top, we have 5 times the square root of 3, and we can't simplify that. So you might notice that the square root of 3 got moved to the top, and the radical disappeared from the bottom. All right, a couple more examples here, just some practice. 8 divided by the square root of 2. We're trying to get rid of the square root of 2 in the denominator position, so we'll multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. On top, we have 8 times the square root of 2. On the bottom, we're squaring the square root of 2, so we're just left with 2. Notice in this top example, 5 over 3 is a fraction that can't be simplified, but this time, we have a fraction here, 8 over 2, that can be simplified. So sometimes it is possible to reduce after you rationalize. 8 divided by 2 is 4 and we still have the square root of 2 attached at the back. One more time, this time we're going to use the quotient property here. We're going to take our fraction under one square root and give the top and bottom their own square root. So we have the square root of 5 over the square root of 2. We want to get rid of the square root of 2 in the denominator position, so we'll multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2 and rationalize. On top we have the square root of 5 times the square root of 2 we have a product property that says that if we have the same roots here, we're allowed to multiply those two numbers under one root. So the square root of 5 times 2 is the square root of 10. On the bottom, we squared the square root of 2, and so we got rid of our square root, and we are just left with the value 2. On top, we got the square root of 10. On the bottom, we got 2. We cannot divide these. These are not uh, common numbers, radical numbers and integers cannot do math together. So this is not equal to the square root of 5. Make sure you don't make that mistake. 
If it was the square root of 10 over the square root of 2, then we could divide. But here we can't. we got to leave it as is. All right, so let's see why we need to learn that as we talk about the 45, 45, 90 special right triangle. This right triangle comes from just cutting a square in half. And when we do that, we have created an isosceles right triangle, meaning that it has two equal side lengths. If we were to just go after this problem without knowing what any of the values are, we know that the sides are going to be the same. And if I use Pythagorean theorem to solve a right triangle, I know that the leg squared plus the leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. I have two x squareds over here. To keep solving for x, that side length, I could divide both sides by 2. So now I have the hypotenuse squared divided by 2 equals x squared. I can now square root both sides. Square rooting this fraction, I'm allowed to use that quotient property and give the top and bottom their own square roots. Square root of hypotenuse squared, well that's just square rooting a square, I'm going to be left with hypotenuse. On the bottom I have the square root of 2, so hypotenuse divided by the square root of 2. Here we have that dividing by a radical, so we're going to rationalize and multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. On top we're going to have the hypotenuse times the square root of 2, and on the bottom we're canceling our square root and we're left with the value of 2. Another way to describe this is to say we're taking half of the hypotenuse and multiplying by the square root of 2. That's going to give us a side length. So in the 45, 45, 90, there are a few different ways that we can describe how to get each of the sides. We know it's an isosceles right triangle, so the legs, or the sides here, are equal or congruent. And as it turns out, the leg times the square root of 2 is going to give me my hypotenuse length. One way that you can prove that this is true is by giving yourself side lengths on your right triangle here. You can start off by just saying that the length is 1. That would be the simplest right triangle. 1 squared plus 1 squared equals your hypotenuse squared. Well, 1 squared plus 1 squared is 2, and if you square root to solve for the hypotenuse, you get the square root of 2. So that must mean that whatever your side length is, times the square root of 2, is your hypotenuse. So these are the three important formulas that we're going to use when we're doing example problems here. There's only really two different forms of problems you can be given with these 45, 45, 90 right triangles. Either you're provided the side length, as in this case. We know the other side length is going to be the exact same value because it's an isosceles triangle. And the hypotenuse, as we just described, is going to be whatever that leg value is with the square root of 2 attached. So if the side length is 8, the hypotenuse is going to be 8 times the square root of 2. The only other version of this type of problem would be if you were given the hypotenuse and asked to find the leg. Let's pretend like we didn't know this part of our formula here. We could use Pythagorean theorem. We could say that this side is x, this side is the same, so it must also be x. I can take x squared plus x squared and it should equal my hypotenuse squared. Over here we have 2x squared, 10 squared is 100. To get to x squared we're going to divide by 2. So x squared equals 50 now and square root both sides to get to x. The square root of 50 can be simplified by factoring it into 25 times 2. And the square root of 25 can come out and be simplified. So we have 5 at the front, the square root of 2 stayed behind. So that's certainly one way to do it. However, notice here that what happened is exactly what we said would happen. 
the side length is half the hypotenuse with the square root of 2 attached. So if you know the hypotenuse is 10, cut it in half and attach the square root of 2 to that value, and those are the lengths of your sides. The other special type of right triangle is called a 30, 60, 90, describing the angles inside that triangle. Again, you could sketch out a tri right triangle. You could draw a base length here. You could give yourself a 30 degree angle and then attach that third side. What you would find, though, is that this side across from the 30 degree angle and the hypotenuse are going to relate in a very easily visible way. The hypotenuse should be twice the length of that side across from the 30 degree angle. If you know two sides in a right triangle, well, you can use Pythagorean theorem to solve for that third side. And in doing so, you should see that this side length times the square root of 3 is going to be this other side length. And if you really wanted to prove it, well, you could take these variables, this length doubled as the hypotenuse, and this length times the square root of 3 is this side. You could plug those variables into your Pythagorean theorem to prove and see if that's true. And it turns out that it is indeed true. So these three formulas are the result. One side is called your short leg. That's across from the 30 degree angle. The other side, across from the 60 degree angle, is going to be your longer side. And across from the 90 degree angle is always your hypotenuse. So the short side is going to be half the hypotenuse. Or if we think about that backwards, the hypotenuse is going to be double the short leg. And if we know our short leg value, if we multiply by the square root of 3, we'll get our long leg. There are different ways that we can think about those formulas. If we algebraically move things around or substitute, we can get these three other versions. However, I find that the top three and maybe this one right here are the most commonly needed. So let's see how we can use those formulas and solve some 30, 60, 90s. It is important to establish what parts of the triangle you have so you can figure out what formulas are needed to solve for the unknown pieces. Across from the 30 degree angle is always your short leg. If this is 30 degrees in a right triangle, this complementary angle up here must be 60 degrees. So across from the 60 degree angle is your longer leg. And across from the 90 is always your hypotenuse. So we're given the short leg here. Everything is based on the short leg. If we double our short leg, we can get our hypotenuse. So 2 times 5 is 10. If I take my short leg and multiply by the square root of 3, I can get my longer leg. Once again, over here, we're just in using a, a radical length here. But same exact properties are applied. Across from the 30 degree angle is our short leg, across from the 60 is our long leg, and across from the, high, the 90 degree angle is your hypotenuse. So we still know the short leg. We're going to double that to get our hypotenuse. Two times the quantity 5 times the square root of 3 means we're just going to multiply our integers at the front and leave that radical value in the back. Taking the short leg and multiplying by the square root of 3 is going to give us our long leg. Multiplying the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 in this case is squaring the square root of 3. So that undoes the square root and we're left with 3. So 5 times 3 is 15. Slightly different version of this problem would be if you know the hypotenuse. So we'll be able to find that short leg by just working backwards and dividing the hypotenuse in half. So taking half of 24 will give us a side length of 12. If that's our short leg there, 
Multiplying that by the square root of 3 will give us our longer leg. One more time, this time using a radical length here. Still the hypotenuse is given, so we'll cut that in half to get our long leg across from the 30 degree angle. Half of 8 times the square root of 5, again we're just going to do our math with our integers there and leave that radical number in the back. So half of 8 is 4, so we have 4 times the square root of 5. Taking that short leg and multiplying by the square root of 3 is going to give us our longer leg across from the 60 degree angle. So 4 times the square root of 5 times the square root of 3. Now we have two radical numbers that we can do math with. Both square roots, so we're allowed to multiply them under one square root. And we get 4 times the square root of 15 in that case. Alright, now we've made it to the trickiest type of problem with the 30, 60, 90. If you're given the long leg, how do we find the short leg and the hypotenuse? Well, one thing you can do is you can start with your equation. The short leg times the square root of 3 is the long leg. So I can take my long leg value here and plug it into that formula. And I can do an algebra step here and divide both sides by the square root of 3. So again, this is a reason why we needed to know how to rationalize. 12 divided by the square root of 3 is going to make us rationalize. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. So we have 12 times the square root of 3 divided by 3. A third of 12 is going to give us 4 times the square root of 3. That's certainly possible to do it that way, although I did mention that if you change that formula slightly, there is a shortcut that we could possibly take. Without rationalizing, what we could do is we could take a third of the long leg and attach the square root of 3 to that. And so as we see here, if I take a third of 12 and attach the square root of 3, well then I get the exact same value. Now that I have the short leg, I can double it to get the hypotenuse. Doubling the value of 4 times the square root of 3, I'm just going to double those integer in front and get 8 times the square root of 3. One more time, this time including a length with a radical value. If I divide my long leg by the square root of 3, I get my short leg. So sometimes it's nice if your long leg has radical 3 attached, because all you need to do is cover that up and your short leg value is right in front of it. Dividing this by the square root of 3 cancels the square root of 3, and I'm left with a value or length of 5. So if my short leg is 5, I can double that to get to my hypotenuse, 2 times 5 is 10. Alright, so we're going to need to practice our special right triangles. If you're a student who thinks about going into pre-calculus, well trigonometry uses these special right triangles when they're describing the unit circle. So knowing these properties is going to help you in the future. Good luck practicing. Beep.